Okay, let's talk about transmission lines. Um, so most people with radios are familiar with coax. Uh, so there's a, a center conductor and then a shield around it. And the uh, electromagnetic wave gets trapped in that tube and it bounces around between the inner conductor and the outer conductor and it travels in a strange shape wave. Um, the inside of this can be air or can be some type of uh, dielectric, some type of plastic. Uh, you can have open line, uh, like ladder line, uh, which is just two pieces of wire and the uh, electromagnetism uh, goes between the uh, between these two pieces of wire and travels through air. So that's, uh, that's very common. Back in the old t television antenna days, there was a twin lead. I think it was a 300 ohm. It was two wires, and there was a piece of piece of plastic that uh, encapsulated the thing. But it was it was open. In uh, radar installations, you might find real waveguide, which is just a, uh, a rectangular metal object, a lot of times silver coated inside or some type of fancy coating inside. And the electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic wave uh, will, will, sit in, will sit in this thing and uh, uh, bounce around in there. Uh, I remember having to solve the equations for this when I took ENM in physics class. Uh, uh, and um, you have to set it so that the, uh, the E uh, the voltage part of the wave ends up being zero at the conductors and um, then you solve Maxwell's equations to go through this thing and it's a big nasty equation. Um, I've ac actually had to solve this equation also in, in uh, for optics. Uh, in optics there's uh, actually uh, similar wave guiding. I uh, won't bore you with that but uh, it's the exact same equations. I remember having to solve a problem once and I said oh I remember solving that in my ENM class and getting out my old textbook and finding the right equation to solve a problem for optics. Okay, so there's other types of waveguides um, in printed circuit boards. Uh, you can have a, uh, uh, so if this is the uh, circuit board, you can have copper on one side and then on the, on the other side you can have, so, so let's say this is this is copper on the bottom. And then on the top, you can have a little strip of copper. Um, that's the trace. And uh, this is called microstrip. And the ENM waves set up uh, uh, sort of like this. They go from the, that down to ground and they, 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 they propagate. And there's things called strip line and buried this or that. And anyway, I found a nice reference. Um, oh, I'm drawing on it. <laughs> uh, called uh, Microstrip Strip Line CPW and SIW designs made by um, some ham radio operators. And this, I guess, was published in uh, QSL Net. And um, let's see, I think there's some pictures here in the back. So uh, this is a picture of strip line. Let's see if I can zoom in anymore. A picture of strip line where there's a conductor on the top and a conductor on the bottom, and then the uh, the actual conductor that holds the uh, ENM wave uh, is uh, is is uh, kind of levitated inside this thing. So that's like a, a buried trace in a in a circuit board. Uh, you can then. Uh, put in uh, vias to, to ground the top and the bottom contacts and make this kind of into a rectangular waveguide with a center conductor. Um, so that's, that's a fancy type. Here's the microstrip that I'm interested in. It's the, oops, sorry. It's the uh, easy one to, uh, an easy one to do. There's just one big bottom conductor and then a, and then a, a trace on top. And this is what the E and M wave would look like. Uh, let's see, here we go again. All right, let me skip ahead. Here's another one. Uh, this one is called Stripline. So you have uh, 
one conductor. This is a better picture here. You have one conductor, then you have two grounds, and the ENM wave sets up like that. So uh, that is a strip line. You can have a strip line with a bottom substrate called GCWP. Uh, there's, uh, let's see, what are these things called? Grounded coplanar waveguide. Anyway, there's lots of different types of ways to do this. Um, Here's a rectangular waveguide. Anyway, uh, and then you can get to the point where you're interested in the shapes of things, making uh, making corners. So you can get an unintentional bounce in the wave if you have if you try to go around a corner. So you might put a roundy bit on it. You might put a bevel on it. Uh, you might put a step on it. You can do different things to alleviate those things. Uh, this is what I'm interested in today, this type of uh, low-pass filter. Um, you can put in gaps to cause resist, uh, uh, capacitances. Uh, when you have T uh, intersections to reduce bounces, you can put in different little mouse bites. Again, this is the type of filter I'm interested in today. Um, you can put in uh, fancy inductors. Anyway, uh, nice, nice big paper. Um, okay, so what did I do today? Well, I took, uh, I took something that looks kind of like this, and I scaled it down to what I was doing. And I really don't know what frequency this thing was designed at, but I, I do know it's supposed to be a low, a low pass filter. So I uh, cut one out and put it on my board. And um, it's not exactly right, but I thought maybe it would do something. So uh, let's see here. Here it is. Let me make sure it's uh, making good contact everywhere. And make sure I'm not touching it. All right. So I think we can see that. So um, it, uh, oh man. It's a little bit touchy. The uh, um, tape that I'm using, uh, this, this uh, copper tape is supposed to have conductive glue on it as well, and it doesn't always conduct well. It starts to pull up. I really should go back and, and solder these things down so I have good electrical contact everywhere. I'm just going to push them down as best as I can here. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Oh man. Yeah, see? It just doesn't want to stick always. Ah, there we go. Good. Okay, so we have uh, two traces. We have the uh, Smith chart to show it's if it's 50 ohms or not. And it's kind of circling around 50 ohms here um, at. Uh, at, uh, that's 90 megahertz, so it spirals off at higher frequencies, but at lower frequencies it's staying okay. And then this is the through, uh, and so let's, oops, let's grab that marker and drag it over. So it's starting to turn corners right about there. And that's at around 650 megahertz. It's starting to drop, and uh, it drops down to about 6.7 dB at 900. So it is acting as a low-pass filter. Um, so pretty gentle, um, but it does do something. And so I designed my first low-pass filter. Yay. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think it shows that uh, if you want to do microstrip designs with uh, UHF frequencies, um, you're going to end up with really big things. Um, so the circuits are going to be really, really big. So there's really no reason to do um, strip line designs at anything below a gigahertz. You, you really should do lump element design um, for things like this. Um, the transmission line may be useful if you need to get a signal from here to there on a PC board. 
So I found that about a hundred mil trace and a 62 mil pre-C board is about 50 ohms. So that's a good, that's a good uh, data point to know. Most people who do uh, microstrip design on a um, circuit on, on, on PC boards generally get a four-sided PC board. And the reason they do that is uh, there's four sides to the PC board. So let's say one, two, three, four. One and two are very close together. There's a big gap between two and three, and then, and then three and four are very close together. So because one and two are very close together, that's the place to do this. So you have a very thin uh, dielectric um, and the uh, design rules are better. But you're generally talking about two, four gigahertz uh, type of uh, circuits in there. So uh, I don't think it's extremely useful at these frequencies. 